relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. When you're sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Nah. But it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was? Before I was me, I was you. you. Man score, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. What's up, y'all? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Harry, what's going on? You ready to rock and roll? It's just the family in the That's building. That's right. We might have a guest or two, but yeah, you know me, Dante. Having a tough time keeping these gators down. This is difficult. It is difficult. People don't say how difficult it is. It's it is. difficult. Not right. It ain't easy. Dre, what's popping? You good? Cool, Jim. Shit, y'all. Reggie, Reggie, get busy. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Andre's what? too high to use full words, man. That wasn't even full words. What did he say? I don't know. <laughs> huh? What? Nicer? Huh? What? <laughs> None of that sounded audible. Right. I want to apologize to the fans for uh, turning uh, Andre on the weed. That's right. That's the worst thing I ever did. Uh, like Dewey, Dewey Cox, you're like, Andre, you don't want none of this shit. <laughs> you don't want none of this shit. What does it do? Is it addictive? No. You can't get but, addicted. <laughs> does, it, does it make you feel bad? It makes you feel better. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a hangover afterwards? Not at all. You sleep like a baby. <laughs> so I think I, I do want some of that shit. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what a great movie. Underrated. Walk hard. The Dewey Cox story. <laughs> you know what I like, too? Um, MacGruber. MacGruber is underrated. MacGruber is underrated. I'm going to shoot. I'm going to oh. shoot. I'm going to shoot. Shut up. I'm going to shoot. <laughs> That's it. That's anyway. A goofy-ass comedy. I love it. I love a nice, goofy-ass comedy. You know what I liked? I yeah. didn't think I was going to like. Well, I liked the first half. Then it went all this shit. But uh, Zohan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't Zohan was good. Zohan. Like with if the you feet. Just, the huh? feet and then the hummus. They're eating hummus with everything. On like everything. Brushing their teeth with hummus. Yeah. This is ridiculous. It's real ridiculous. So my son turned one years old. Oh, uh, that's right. The little Harry, guy is Harry one came out old. to the party. Andre, I said, call Andre. And he was like, because cause he's going to say, yo, it's today. And what did he say? What did he text me? I didn't tell you what he texted me, oh, right? Oh, you didn't tell me. Oh, uh, he's such I just asshole. I called Andre. I didn't he respond. Didn't, I called Andre. This is what his new thing is, by the way, now. I called Andre. He didn't answer, so I didn't leave a message or whatever. Because And uh, he texted me, yo. <laughs> <laughs> like, he goes, that, yo is the most useless text in the world because all it does is let somebody know that you got a text or whatever. <laughs> you could have just told me, like, hey, what's up or whatever. Andre will text you yo to talk for something he needs from you. Yeah. Yo, yo. But oh, yo. you know what? It's funny because I didn't even look at his text either because uh, he protects me before. Yo, D, when you picking up again, he wants to know when I'm going to the weed spot. Uh, I didn't respond remembered. to that. I didn't respond to that. And you know what? You know what? That was earlier that day. He texted me earlier that day. On to Saturday? Get that was earlier that day. I got the same text messages, man. I can look back to. It says July 18. All right, so all right, maybe it wasn't. <laughs> then he said to me, "Yo, sorry about missing the little dude's number first birthday. I had a show and I forgot. My bad, fam." Yeah, you're and right. I and here's the thing, though, Dante. Uh, your party was at like one in the afternoon. That's when the first birthday party. We don't do a prime time. 
one year old's birthday party at night. <laughs> we Don't blame the show, you motherfucker. You forgot. You're like, oh, I got responsibilities. I got. What, what did I say to you, Harry? When he when he wasn't, he said, "Where's Dre at?" And I was like, "He forgot. He forgot. He forgot." He forgot. He forgot. I just, I had like the show took up the space. In my brain, yeah, because you don't have a. a a, He got a smooth ass brain. It's not got no wrinkles and it's just smooth like an egg, like eggshell, just like an eggshell. I know, no, I don't know. know. Uh, (laughs) That's not an excuse to get out of events. Hey, man, get it, you know, sadate. So I, I'm gonna put this out there. If y'all want to donate some some money to my, go to my Venmo or my PayPal. Dante Nero, the comedian. Y'all can get my son something if y'all want to get some. If you don't, it's whatever. Go to my Venmo, Dante Nero. Uh, the email is Dante Nero. I heard. Comedian. I heard your son needs new rims for his Jeep. Is that true? <laughs> he does need. He he got new rims. He got who? He got the hottest. He got the hottest. Uh. A stroller on the planet for his birthday. Is that true? He what? Need an ounce? No, he don't yeah. need an ounce. <laughs> that you talking about? You stupid. That's you. <laughs> that's you. You need an ounce. <laughs> but your son, one year old, man, that's crazy. One year old, that's crazy. He's Hit already, my Venmo, yo. He's Hit already my got Venmo, teeth. my PayPal, my Cash App, all of that. Get, give my son something. He deserves it. Yeah, my son too, man. Uh, my son <laughs> you, is a. Uh, you don't got a son, man. You got something new. Don't you worry about that. I well, I can't get one without some money. So if you want to contribute to my son, uh, my right. future son, it's for your future yeah, son. Yeah, you can go to my Venmo, my PayPal. I think I have. So both. we had a little quiet thing in the park. You know, it was nice. It was very. It nice. was nice. Very we dad, we had it. We had social. Andre, we had curry goat ah and jerk chicken. I would have been eating good. Yo, we had I had individual COVID friendly individual box meals. How dope was that? It was really good, man. It was really <laughs> good stuff. Yeah, it's night. It's much better than you know, just like snacks. Of course, you have to do something special instead of getting this. You know, the six foot sub that you yeah, get for like the Super Bowl. Yeah, you gonna do a six foot sub, sub with the, the with six. the soggy tomato? No, nah, I'm a, I was good. No, individually, <laughs> it's uh, goat. How many times do, did did any of the white people at the party go? Is this bones in the goat meat? What's what is this? Yeah, they said that a couple because you know yeah. goat got a lot of bones. You got to break yeah. it up. But Jamaicans, you gotta understand, man. Mm. Jamaicans is one of the that's one of the biggest islands for for slavery. Like that's where all the slaves went to Jamaica, Haiti, all through the Caribbean. It was more. Slaves and went to went to the to the West Indies and the Caribbean and any place else. Even See, more, so lucky. I wish I could go to Jamaica. Get me fired. I'm trying to get fired. <laughs> and then, um, and so they, you know, so you had a lot of you had a lot of slave people there. So they make food stretch. Mm. So like, you take the goat meat, you cut it up. The chicken, you cut. They cut. They 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 meat cleave the chicken. In pieces, they'll take a chicken leg and cut it into three pieces. Oh wow! Right so along, like there's there's some white dude who's gonna throw out these like ah, it's all bones. They're like hey, wait, wait, where are you going with that? What are you doing? Wait, wait, wait! Quick pause because the same thing that y'all using to make the joke is the same thing that these niggas manufacture and sell back to you artificially. What you do you buying, mean? White people are buying bovine cow fed collagen. And, and beef marrow and bone marrow soups to fix their broken skins and bad guts. Meanwhile, Jamaicans mm. have known there's nutrition within the bone because that's a part of the animal. That's Wait, was I supposed son, to eat the bone well, that's, on the goat? That, Go look, eat. here's what it happened. Initially, bone marrow. Google it. $100 yeah. for an ounce of that shit. Yeah, it, but it, I, that's not why they started doing it, dog. I mean, what do they started then? Huh? Tell me the reason they started eating bone marrow. Because they yeah, didn't bro. get the they didn't get the best cuts of meat. Same thing like with soul food. Bullshit. There's no way at, at, for for thousands of years, millions of different types of people acro- across. Dog, bro. you got to understand one of the reasons why one of the reasons why even even African American slaves in America they were given the collard greens and all that green why stuff was pig, that was the pig worst. Pig. Not not that it was the worst, but it was the it was the it was the Most food difficult. that the that the that the 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 slave masters wouldn't 
I'm not have a, I'm not a part of history that that black people were enslaved in America and and they ate lesser parts of the foods and made the best of it. That's what I'm saying. But, you know who could solve this problem? Let's get Phil wait. Hunt what did back. you say? What did you say? That's not all of the history that there's people that. No, we're talking. If you're talking about pre-colonial, I mean there was a there's a there's the bone carries so you eat it. And just the, just the way they utilize every other part of the animal. Well, they used every all part of the animal. Yes. Yeah. yeah but th- they didn't have an understanding of what bone marrow did at that time. Huh? When, when, how could you say they didn't have an understanding of bone marrow when these are the same people who had an understanding of application of herbs that they knew to find certain herbs? Oh, in the- absolutely. I'm not yeah. saying that wasn't the case. But I'm saying those people can ease that same person who understand the application of loose herbs, which makes you, by, by that use, you're a herbalist. The fact that you can identify a plant species, identify its use, app- apply its use, and use it successfully makes you a herbalist. You can also find out that when you eat a certain part of the that's animal... Not a, that's not the same thing, Dre. No, I'm saying the same thing if you eat organ meats. And you yes. Eat they're both fully nutritional parts of the... Okay, thing. let me ask you this. Why did Aztecs, why did Aztecs eat organ meats? Aztecs ate organ meats? I to don't get know. to the other side? Oh. <laughs> no, they ate organ meats. They ate the... They, they conquered their opponents and they ate the organs yeah. of the people that they... It was a spiritual thing. It was to gain their power. The power... Person to person, or yeah, like- yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but even even organ meats and stuff, eating the heart and stuff, like like in in Africa, they would kill the lion and eat the heart of the of the lion and stuff. But it wasn't. It was more of a a spiritual thing. Now I'm not I'm not taking away. I mean, God knows I'm not taking away from the ingenuity of yeah. of of African peoples and herbs and their own medicinal. I mean, the, the period, even in Egypt, Egypt had gynecologists before they even thought that there's even when 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 English people when English people was jerking their women off when they was <laughs> sending them to the to the um sending them to the doctor doctor to get finger popped what was that what they call it con, con, not consumption what was it the thing Let Harry see. Uh, see. but they was just jack, jacking off women they would go to the doctor. English women were going to the doctor, getting jacked off. They had a, they had the vibrators jacking off girls, just telling them it was healthy for them. Not to say it wasn't healthy, but I'm saying when you're talking about there was a medicinal, you're absolutely right that there was an African doctors and herbs and um, garlic. Even in even in the in the, the during the Black Plague, they hired. Uh, Jamaicans to go and move the bodies, and they used to cover their bodies with a with a garlic salve mm. to move the bodies because the, the garlic. Con- was- they always refer to it as, as hysteria. Hysteria. Had hysteria. I don't know about the other shit though. You know about it. oh about the garlic? No, I'm talking about when you were saying what they did to the women. I didn't know what that was. I just heard of hysteria. I never knew what they were doing. That that. They called it that. So they say cure hysteria. The the guy made a vi- basically made a vibrator, and he was the, and and all these highfalutin. Um, they do lead. be getting hysterical though. So, let's be honest. So they, do, they still well, they still they be get, getting hysterical. They get more hysteria when I be giving that orgasm. Bam. <laughs> well, you could go too far. Too much of a dosage or anything. Never too it's far, player. Never oh, too far. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> Never <laughs> too far. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't see Dante zooming in, you could check out all of this stupidity on the YouTube channel, on the Man School 202 YouTube channel. Yo, send my son some money oh, on geez. the Venmo and the Cash App and the fucking PayPal. <laughs> Y'all know what time it is. My son needs some Jordans and some shit. Um. <laughs> Kids living better than a lot of us, let's be honest. Yo, he's out there in his full Nike tracksuit that he came out in for the birthday party. <laughs> he looked like party. he was down with the Rock Steady crew. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I saw him throwing down like a small thing of cardboard, and he was starting to break things. Yeah, linoleum. But, he wouldn't fuck but, with cardboard. That's my son. But then he, he had, had to look, take a nap. He got tired. He, he got knocked, cranky. Yo, he knocked out right in the middle of the party. He was like, yo, I'm out, son. I was like, all right, do your thing. Hold on. I'm trying to find... I got to show his... Uh, zoom in and zoom out there. It's uh, blurry there for a second, Dante. 
Hold on, son. I was trying to share my screen. Make sure I can share my screen, son. Okay, but, all right. Let's see here. You be uh, wilding out with that, son. Uh, you be wilding out with that sometimes, son. All right, I think you could share now. Okay, hold on. Again, you can see all this content on the YouTube page. And also follow the Man School 202 Instagram page, too. We got a lot of content on there, too. And we're going to be doing... Uh, we're going to be doing some live shows on uh, Instagram very soon. Why my shit ain't, ain't zooming in? I, don't know I lost you there, bro. Can you hear? Yeah, you hear me? Yeah. No? Yeah, you got real low all of a sudden. What happened? Hold on, hold on. You hear me or you don't hear me? I hear you, but you're really low. Am I wrong hold on, on that? Son, hold on, or did son. I do something on my... You must have did something, son. Nah, because I'm still piping hot, yo. No, now you're... Uh, you ch Did you change something? Yeah, how about now? Oh, yeah, wait. Uh, I'm good. Go yeah, there you are. Sorry about that. I'm piping hot, yo. Word up. Word Come up. On. Shout out to Cameo, by the way. Word greatest up. Living, greatest I'm living musician. I'm telling you, you got the world. The same way how I am. And I'm on your Put on your shoes. We're going to get copyright infringement because I'm singing the song. And it sounds just like him. <laughs> That's, That's right. just great. I word up. I word up. Hold on, I'm trying. I'm trying to um find uh my son's his gift I gave him. It's really for his mom though, but it's the dopest. Well, I heard a rumor that you're getting uh someone's gonna do a painting of uh Dante Jr. and slap the picture on the side of his uh car. Yeah, Mateo, we gotta get Mateo on the show. Word up, word, word up. up. <laughs> Where's my? Sh this is a goofy one today. This is gonna be a goofy one. Nah, nah, son, we. Oh, there's the hotness. There go the hotness. Let me see uh, how I blow this up, yo. So, Andre, what did you do instead of coming to celebrate Dante, a very important moment in Dante's life? What were you doing between, fuck, between, 1 me, PM, between 1 p.m. and 5 p.m.? What were you doing? Between 1 p.m. and 5 p.m.? I'm going to go with uh, smoking weed. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going with. That's a good bet. That's a safe bet. I like we, uh, I, I, what, what happened? Yo, you I'm see my wagon, weed. yo? Oh, that's a hell of a wagon you got for him. That is wild. Hold on, let me bring it up. The this is van. great podcasting, guys. Bang! He was right, and then he got his little his little girlfriend, his little not his girlfriend, but a little girl his that was at the party. Yeah, he <laughs> she was sitting in the front like as a two seater. Yeah, it was rocking out with the two seater. <laughs> oh, nice. That was it. So somebody's going to do a, a picture of my son, the silhouette, like on my car, and they're going to put it on the side there, right there. Bang! Right on the side. Oh, there we go. Um, let's get out of that thing so we get back on the... Uh, how does it feel, though, now, like, a year into this, Dante, being a so dad, it's man? Like, it's like, uh, you know, I mean, come on, you know, be honest. Like, he don't know the difference, dog, you know? Are we out? Am I? Did no, I I'm still seeing your thing. I don't know how to do, unshare. Stop oh, sharing. There it is. Bam. There we go. There it is. So, what does it feel like being a dad now after a year, man? Oh man, it's it's he's a cool. It's weird because everybody keep asking me that, and I keep saying it. He's such a chill kid that it don't. It it's just it just doesn't infringe upon my life at all. He's such a. He's such a, you know, I mean, you know how easy he is. He really, mm. he, both of y'all know how easy he, he don't cry. He don't, I mean, you know, he grunts. He's potty trained already. He, you know, he grunts. We put him on the potty, bong. He drops a, drops a load like he's a truck driver. One couple of times I was like, damn. <laughs> I felt like a truck driver snuck in the house and shit it in his potty. But I mean, like, when do we, good. when he start eating all that corned beef? What is this all about? <laughs> what is it, why is there sauerkraut in this? Yeah, like, <laughs> Babies baby, don't eat what, sauerkraut. Baby, are we feeding this kid raw sausages? What is it? Raw. <laughs> why is it? Why is this guy got? Why is he got hot, hot dogs with sauerkraut on this? Yeah. But you know he's so chill, so it's it's cool. I mean, I kind of I knew what it was gonna be. You know, I knew what it was going to be. I knew what, what it would take, and, and I was ready for it. And I, you know, I mean, you spend so much time helping other people, and, you know, a lot of a lot of dudes, like, fans of the show was like, yo, you need to – you should have a son, dog. You shouldn't – you shouldn't let all this – this is what they said to me. You shouldn't let all this greatness 
just die with you. You know what I mean? You need to pass it on. And I was like, you right. I shouldn't let all this greatness just right. die with me. And then your wife knocked on the door. You're like, are you done in the bathroom? You're like, I'm almost done. <laughs> Give me a second. I'm almost let done me, shaving. Let me show you the greatness. <laughs> I mean, he's an adorable baby, man. It's good, it's good to see. Uh, I know how happy you are with him. There, I'm still. I still go back and forth on whether I want. I know how much love you have for it, but I also know how much responsibility there is for it. Because I'm around my brother and his kids now. Yeah. Uh, the last couple months since the pandemic and stuff, and uh, it's like, oh man, it's exhaust. I get to leave and I'm exhausted. Like the little one with the the kid, the the boy. First of all, boys are just so much more energy for for no reason. Just running into walls. Oh, look at this. Look at the picture. A little uh, Dante Jr. You got to talk to him. He's mad too. He's good. He's cool. But I mean, it's not like, look, you got to have a good partner. I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of whack when you, you know, if you don't got a good partner and they're not, you know, I mean, and, and they're not pulling their weight. You know what I mean? It's That's like, part it's, of it. Yeah, of course you have to be. But my model is my parents and I, they, they, uh, they did their best, but at the same time, I look back on some of the things I'm like, yeah, I can't do this the way my dad did this because my dad allowed my dad. It was clear. My dad worked seven days a week and it was clear that the stress got to him yeah. because the things I remember now as a little kid was him being angry all the time. And I realized what it is, is that he had the pressure of raising three kids and, and a mortgage and working seven days a week. So he didn't want any inconveniences whatsoever. Right. So anything, any hiccup was like a speed bump in his life, and he did not deal with the stress. Well, he would just start screaming, "Why does life keep fucking me? You guys are, <laughs> you guys does, are killing why me. Does, why does life keep fucking me? This family's killing me. <laughs> you guys your, your mom's was wild. Kill me. <laughs> your mom's was wilding out too. That's she's, true. My she's mom was wild for the night. But I, it's thing. It's, it's I think this is the Shout thing out about ASAP Rocky. <laughs> I think the the thing is that if you if he was older, the problem is you get older and you don't have the same energy. But mm. when you're older, you have more wisdom. You, at least you have more wisdom and you can navigate. You can navigate. Now, what I do, three kids? Hell no. My pops had my pops was sixteen, eight boys and eight girls. Like, there's no way that you could give sixteen kids what they need as parents. I mean, even if you're filthy rich, like I don't even mean material the time. The time the is time not and enough. For them. And, and like, and so, you, you know, I, I always say this, like, it's interesting how um, my fault, you know, if the kids just didn't die, if you didn't kill your kids, then you, you did good. You was a good parent. If your kids didn't die on the way to adulthood. Right. You did all that right. That was the only goal. Just you don't just kill them. Just don't kill them. And then you wonder why, you know, you get, I mean, we all got, we all know motherfuckers that it's just fucked up because, and they're reverting back to whatever issues they had as, uh, as kids. And it's the issues that they carry on and on. I mean, a lot of the consultations that I do now are issues that have happened in the context of the parents, because, you know, when you're, you're growing up and you look at your, you look at your father and that is the epitome, epitome of manhood and your mother is the epitome of womanhood. And if you don't, um, if that's not a good model, then that's the model you go into life with, you know, to, to, to figure out, well, okay, this is what I need to do. This is who I need to be because that's what it is. So if your mom is, is crazy then and your pops is is depressed or he's overwhelmed or something all of those things all of those things affect you and then when it comes time for you to be social i mean i, I mean i don't know if you because we're a little young you know we're different age Harry, but i don't know do you find that it's more about being self-introspective now or not even at your age was For me that a personally, thing? as a person, well, just to be self-introspective, or no? What? I mean, like, was that? I mean, I know you know doing the show and that kind of stuff was that kind of growth. You know, you wanted that kind of personal growth. So, like, especially, uh, and and I and I, I mean this across the board, uh, children of immigrants. Yeah, 
which is a lot of people in some shape or form, way, shape or form, because even if you're not an immigrant, if you're just old school, you know, prior to, you know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to think of at a time when people were like, oh, you should go to therapy. You should you need to talk to somebody. And I mean, that, well, that's that, yet that just started to become a normal thing i would say within the last 15 years maybe and even then uh, i think for white but, people it was in 15 years but like like real oh, em- black immigrants people are still black people we, and people immigrants s- yeah it's still, still not i mean it's it's a lot more where the fuck did andre go i don't know andre is uh disappeared for a second you know <laughs> that or it, he, he passed out on the keyboard I mean, it's possible. <laughs> it's possible. The, uh, I don't know if you, if you, if or he you're thinks in a- you invited him to something important, <laughs> and so he had to skip out <laughs> to make sure. Um, I'm sorry. What were you saying, Dante? I'm saying the, the, the. You know, I know for black people, maybe the last ten years, you see black people started going to therapy and started looking for. I mean, but my, for my father, like my father was therapy born in 1920, yeah. no, so it- he grew up in the depression during Jim Crow era, during the Jim Crow era, right. which and is ironic. Cause what do you say to a therapist? Why are you, what are you so angry? I don't know. Racism. <laughs> like, uh, I can't Jim vote. Crow, can't vote. Segregation. Uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, prior to this, prior to the civil rights uh, movement, like, I mean, not that it's much better now, but a bunch of people burned a cross outside my home. And then the therapist yeah, looked down my, and, was, my, and how does, how does that make you feel? <laughs> Yeah, well, I, you know, I was feeling weird about that. And then it all solidified when they lynched my uncle. You yeah. know, it's like, you, 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 so it was about survival. It was sure, about survival. Yeah. yeah. Now, I mean, I think now it's become more introspective. I don't know. My dad was definitely a hardcore immigrant, you know, like very stringent. Yeah. So he's just, I don't think he ever did therapy, but now he's coming to the idea of like, just now medical marijuana is a thing possibility for my grandfather where like uh, the years he spent talking to calling my brother a junkie he's a junkie for milligrams. some weed you know now like, would your dad smoke weed now if he was uh if i if- i think i can get him to do it now that's the next plan but i'm trying to get the the right stuff because i what i don't want is for him to be like give him an edible and, and have it mess him up for eight straight hours Yo, just give him a, like an indica had like a really low dose edible, like five milligrams, and that's it. Yeah, I got to give him something like that because I don't want what I don't want is him to get paranoid and have his heart beating out of his chest. That's and, usually a sativa that's going to do that. Yeah. So, but he just opened up to the idea of that just, and that's after probably. Oh, and give him some L theanine when you do it too. Oh, geez, I got to write this. Is the problem with honor. I got to write some shit what? down. L theanine. What is that? Probably a protein it's powder. A, an amino acid that's found in green tea leaves that helps you uh, deal with anxiety. L what? L dash theanine. Theanine. Okay. Was, yeah. uh, did the, didn't the Avengers like take him out or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> in the first one, yeah. yeah. What is L theanine? What is the amino that? What does that amino do? It's um regulating like anxiety, stress response, and I think it goes through uh, either serotonin or GABA, one of those two. Wow. Yeah, Andre, I think you might be too relaxed. I think you went too far into that that side of the thing. You might need something that helps you like uh, take yeah, but, some but, stuff but, more seriously. Yeah, you're just Andre too relaxed. goes. He goes over too far and back around the other side. Right. <laughs> Just one big loop over and over again. That's crazy. Um, but yeah, like my, my dad was, I mean, you just didn't go to therapy. No, therapy just... was for you. Therapy meant you were crazy. That's mm. what they looked at. The crazy and or at the time homosexual. That's literally how they looked at it back in the day. Andre, how old are you now? 27. All right, so did your mom do therapy or did, did your sisters? Not, not, well, they're Jamaican, so they can't. No. If they find out, you could lose your Jamaican card. The, they won't even let you eat curry There's a no lot more. of things going on. The Me Too movement's going to hit Jamaica in 2037. <laughs> it's going to be like, it's a little bit different with certain cultures, man. The same thing with the Hispanic culture. Like therapy, I think they're just starting to, I think they just started to hear about it. But definitely there's no Me Too down in yeah. Mexico. 
You know, oh, I mean, no. they still have uh, weather There's no Me Too on Galavision. Right. Sabado Gigante is still some old dude feeling up some little youngie. Gigante. Sabado Gigante. Oh, por qué? Why? What was you? Oh, Don Buena. What was you? Them niggas is still creeping out. They still creeping. Yeah. I watched this thing. Uh, I was watching something called, I think it's called, um, something like, uh, Bente Corazones. It's like ten girls and ten guys, and they come up and they oh, just yeah. they look up, they look at, and they vote each other off. Like, oh, nah, yeah. bitch, you ain't hot enough. Get out of here. They they vote each other. Oh, sure, yeah. It's yeah. and it's just like it's not like they ask questions. It's not like your character. None is like, nah, bitch, the other one's hotter. Get out of here. Well, it's funny. I was watching uh on Netflix the uh dating around. It was a, it's a really good show on Netflix. It's interesting. It's one person and then they have five dates in like five nights and they keep cutting back and forth to the dates uh-huh. and just, you know, see how different they act. And it's fascinating because the women, you can see like when a girl will be like, oh, I don't kiss on the first date and if they don't like you. And, and then the other cut, one's blowing them. Cut to, yeah, <laughs> cut to just giving a hand job underneath the bar table. But what I did find interesting also was the, they did one dating around in Brazil. And the one in Brazil was so much more making out and so much more like hooking up, trying to hook chupa, up. Chupa, chupa, chupa. That's why AIDS <laughs> running rampant out there. Is it why? Because it, well, I don't know. Yeah, I, I heard. I, I don't know. Man. I don't, well, Because you know I'm not making this shit up. They have high ass numbers. Hmm. What, what amino acid fix that? I don't know, my nigga. They still searching. L L not fuck no nobody. Condom. <laughs> L condom is the closest thing we got. <laughs> L go back to America. <laughs> L yeah. celibacy. Yeah. Uh yeah, it's it's a weird it's a weird dynamic at that. But the uh self you know re- like re- self retrospectiveness. Yeah, I mean. well you don't you don't you know, this this was not about well, and and you know Harry probably better at this because my you know my family is uh, descendants of slaves and dis- and Caribbean, which I guess is also descendants of slaves. Sure. Um, but you're talking about you're talking about survival. You're talking about just surviving as opposed to flourishing, like this this pursuit of happiness, and food, which is also interesting because that's the the whole the difference in, in education, in the, in the way they value education. I mean, like, um, but you find that that changes um, two years, two generations into assimilation into America. Like, so you'll, you'll literally see the first generation of, of immigrants that come. It's about getting education and working hard and this and that and the other. And then, um, and then, you know, this, the next generation is those people still have that that importance because the parents are here like, look, stop fucking around, get an education, get a good job, get it, whatever, whatever. This is what I want you to be. I mean, it's, you know, especially you see in the Asian community, it's like be a doctor. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, my boy that's Indian, he, you know, it's like he worked for the, with the, in the phone company for me and like him not... He was going to school for engineering. He was the black sheep of the family, bro. Oh, yeah, he was. En- you could be an engineer and be the black sheep of the family in his fa- in his family. You could like, pick the wrong t- uh, the wrong, wrong direction type of, of medicine. You're like, oh, yeah. I wanted you to be heart surgeon, but no, Big Shot had to be a podiatrist. <laughs> I have no son. <laughs> have no son. You make me sick. <laughs> you are lo- you make me look so bad. How can I go to my family? Yeah. You are optometrist. Oi, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just an eye doctor. You know, whatever. But it, it's that that it's that it's the imperativeness of of survival. And then then you look at Andre and he's like yeah. That generation, you're saying, it just, it just fell apart. It just all falls apart. Andre, well, can't maybe that's do... also because his dad's not around that he can. He's able to pursue <laughs> yeah, but that. That's Andre. Without... You would say that, right? That was like the whole. Like, I don't know if you had that. It was like go to college, go to college. Did you have that or no? You want me to go to college? Yeah. yeah. And but it way. wasn't like rabid. Like, no, it was rabid. Yeah. Yeah. So what? What, he was... what exactly the fuck did you think? my childhood was like 
I don't uh, fucking you ever know. see a red I'm trying to commercial? I'm trying to piece it together. Well, I'm trying these- to piece it together from who you are now and I'm mm, it looks grim <laughs> you know, similar to yours <laughs> was it really similar to mine because you know my story it's a, it's Dante zoom in and zoom out for me there you're a little blurry, Ooh, but... I don't know fucking wanted me to go to school yeah me to get a regular job get get you a family and that's it it's, it's the same. yeah but I don't mean I mean not like Doc, be a doctor. Like I didn't. I, I mean, you know, if no, I w- it was never like, you know, go start a hedge fund. Nobody was thinking that. They was like, get you a. But it good- wasn't like be a surgeon or nothing like that. No, nah. the first yeah. step is usually like college. Yeah, like you, like I had. To, I look. It would. It was. It was drummed to me like when you get out of high school, go to college. Which is, I don't really agree with that because you, you don't know anymore. what the fuck you want to do. You don't know what you want to do. You don't even have a lot of times you don't even have the maturity to to even do that, to, to, to even make that kind of commitment, that kind of time commitment. And if you don't make that time time commitment, like my, my nephew is my mom, my, my older sister is a, is a teacher and she, you know, she's got like two master's degrees and, and she had saved money up for my nephew to go to college and he he just didn't have the discipline to do it. So he went to college because he didn't want to disappoint her. Then he fucked up the money. And then when he finally decided what he wanted to do, he had to take out loans because he had fucked up the money in the first place. Oh, my God. You know, because you don't because you don't you, you're, you're not mature enough to make those decisions. But this this whole thing, um, you know, like wanting to be a comic like, you know, they don't get that. I mean, no, if you get a job, not. nobody was like. I didn't tell them, and they were like, oh, yeah, let's get started right now. That didn't fucking happen. The yeah. first time I had the idea, I was in junior high school, and that shit got shut down immediately. Yeah. It was like, yo, go to school, get you a good gig, go to mechanic school, you know. Get a car. trade, get a get trade so you can make money. That's it. Get a good job, and that's it. Nobody wasn't no support of the arts. They that weren't shit. hearing that? No, nah, and it, it, that didn't, nobody heard it until I started paying bills with it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they don't care about it. I mean, they, but I also the other thing is with immigrant parents, it 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 actually makes a lot of sense. I get it. I'm not even angry at my parents for going, "Hey, we came to this country and we battled like, yeah. you know, oppression Warlogs and poverty, <laughs> yeah, and machetes yeah. to get you here so you so could you, tell jokes." Like, like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I get it. But so I just, get it, but Yeah, for me same- Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm saying at the same time, that mentality is also a little bit into like, there's nothing wrong with me. You know, there's no ther. I'm not, I don't need therapy. I don't need to look at myself. This is what it is. And if you don't like it, get the fuck out. You know, there's no self introspectiveness uh, yeah. at times. I mean, I had to say, I just, with the relationship with my dad, I just like, because everything we learned on this show, I had to like shut that shit down with each of them. Because they were just behaving, they were just would let their emotions. They would just go in the direction of their emotions. Right. They were like emotional alcoholics. So whatever their emotion was, that's what they're going to push onto the whole family. So if they're having a shitty day, everybody's going to have a shitty day. And then likewise, if they're in a great mood, it doesn't matter that you're sad or in a shitty day, because they're just they just go with their emotions. Yeah. And you have to same thing here. Yeah, you have to beat that out of them in a weird way and like punish now, talk, them. Talk about that, Harry. How that, like, you know, because I mean, you know, I know the story because yeah. we, you know, I kind of went. Well, my it with dad me. and I love my dad. He's a very, you know, he's worked hard in his life, but he gets stressed out a lot. And he was always stressed out when we were little, and it was clear like he got stressed out from working seven days a week, and the and he didn't want to want anything to go wrong. And when it did, it frustrated him. But he carried that on through adulthood for me and my mom and him had a terrible divorce and she's a lunatic. I love my mom, but she's wild for the night and wild for the day. She's out of her fucking mind, but he would start to get abusive and angry and take all that anger out on me, the son he likes, right? Because his day was shitty. So, you know, I mean, there would be times I came to visit him. I mean, one time the record was, I left in 30 seconds. I was like, fuck this. I'm done. Well, explain that because they don't, they don't, I mean, I know here's what it, here's what it is. He would get angry and take his anger out on you for something small. Like you're trying to help him update his computer or something and he doesn't understand it. And then he gets verbally abusive and angry. 
And then he would apologize later or whatever and, you know, whatever. But it's not good. So I had to put a stop to it, right? So what I did was every time he got, like, angry and disrespectful that way, because he doesn't get angry and disrespectful with my mom, he hates her because she's crazy. So he knows enough to not fuck with her, like, to just... Now he didn't. Well, he didn't fuck with her because because she's super crazy, right? So, so he knew that any interaction with her, it was gonna blow up in his face. Like right. it was, it would, it there was no boundaries, no. And the nothing. same with both my brothers because they're also nuts, right? right? So here's the thing: I, he likes me. I'm there, so now he's gonna fuck with me because yeah. I'm in the room and I put up with it because you know I'm. Polite, first of all, nice. you know you know you're the favorite, and he right. likes you. That's the first thing. Second of all, you were like a nice guy. Like Harry used to. When I met Harry, Harry's Harry's favorite thing was, ah, you know, I don't want to be a dick. Huh. I don't want to be a dick. And I was like, um, I was literally like, I, uh, I, um, there's no way can't... that I could be a dick, even if I tried to be a dick. There's no way that I could be a dick. Right, and you you thing. couldn't. And yeah. the thing was. The thing that was that I, 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 so my, but when you're my, a nice guy, you get taken advantage of even sure. by, even by your own parents. Right. Right. And stuff right. because you're there and you have patience and you'll tolerate it, but it reaches a point where it becomes abusive. It's disrespectful. Right. So why are you taking all your anger out on me shitting on my day? And so I, you know, I would tell Dante the stories and Dante was like, look, you have to, it's the same. It's the same boundaries. rules, right? Same you rules. Got to set these emotional boundaries. Because to me, so so for instance, if like the the difference with with Harry's mom and Harry's dad was that Harry's mom was wow, no matter she was crazy, no matter what, yeah. no matter who it was, no matter what it was. So you could say, okay, this person it can't really help. You, you no, know, if, you can't if, if there's, a, it. there's a consistency in the behavior that, and, then, and I had to learn this myself. There's a consistency in the behavior that everybody they treat is treat. Now, now I'm not making an excuse for the kind of abuse or that, that kind of stuff, but I'm saying at least if there's a consistency in the behavior, then we can, we can make a pretty good logical assumption that the person has a problem con- with self-control or whatever's going on that makes them abusive, right? But if they're picking and choosing who they're abusive to, there has to be an awareness because they're assessing they're assessing how this is going to turn out. So it's like I noticed this about Harry's dad was it was like he would, you know, he would do everything to avoid his mother. You know, like even if they were at family functions, she would she would pick at him and he'd be like, Look, this please tell your mother to leave me alone. Don't yeah. tell her, don't talk to me. He wouldn't even talk to her to tell her not to talk to him. That's that's how much he didn't want none of that smoke from <laughs> he didn't want none from of that Latino, smoke from his crazy mom. Latino woman. Right. So but when it came to Harry, he was just random, like frivolous and random. And the same thing was true to me. Like there was a disparity in the treatment with my dad between my sisters and me. And so it's not that you're so like if you crazy, crazy. Right. You tell him you you tell him Mike Tyson to suck your dick. You know what I mean? Right. Because you you're not aware of the consequences, which is very rarely. I used to say this to Harry all the time that, yo, Crazy people ain't crazy. You know, they, mm. they make a choice about how crazy. They, they're not crazy. They, how you know somebody's crazy is when they're crazy to the point where it's to their physical detriment no matter what. But they know the difference. They're not telling Mike Tyson to suck their dick, right? They're telling the motherfucker that they think they could get away with it. And so, like, I just noticed I was trying to explain that to Harry. I was like, you know, he's making a choice because you tolerate it that, it's okay to do. My father was the same way. Yeah. Because I was the one who was like, you know, it was okay. Like I was like, Oh, that's my dad. That's my dad. That's my dad. Then he was abusive. And then, um, it got to the point where, but then he wouldn't be that way with my sisters. He wasn't abusive right. to them. He was always, you know, he was always catering. So it's kind of like, stuff. Oh, you know how to behave. Right. You right. Just, and it's just, what's that Andre? No, I was saying that they know how to behave, but they just choose when to like. Right. 
you know, they bully shit, and then they decide to be a person again, and then when they seem like, all right, I've had enough, or <laughs> they used to with somebody else that they want to respond, but they can't respond to that person. Right. So they hold it and then come back and deliver it to you because they know that you'll accept right, it. Because you'll take it. So, and I was like, "How hey, you gotta? You have to not accept it." And the, the the sad thing about that is sometimes people are so comfortable with being abusive to you that it gets to the where you don't really matter. Like, it, unfortunately, even if it's family members, you don't always matter. You know, that's where. That's kind of where make ultimate decisions don't give ultimatums one of the one of the rules we go by is because if you somebody's giving you whatever giving you whatever level of shit it is it it your your problem can't your 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 your, your response can't be um they they're doing what they want to do so because they're doing what they want to do ultimately what's happening is they they've made a decision um and it's a conscious decision even if it's not fully conscious even if they're not going cognitively i'm gonna fuck with i like it like that his his i don't think my dad's intention was ever i'm gonna fuck with him but it it was i feel like shit and he'll take uh, subconsciously he knew that where he knew that there was a consequence if he did that to his mom he knew that there was going to be a consequence that he was going to have to pay. That once he started her up, she don't got no off button and he's going to have to take the business. Yeah. And, and so and, I, I had uh, to start implementing basically like penalties and stuff. Yeah. So like when he got like that, I'd pack my shit and leave and just go. Uh, I mean, one trip literally was one time. I think the record was 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. I, I was in the house 30 seconds. He was, he gave me some attitude and I go, I'm out and then left. And I think and then, he wanted you to do something like he wanted you to do something on the computer or something he like needed that. needed my help with something, right, but his right. attitude was rough. He was very, he was having a crappy day and he like some attitude and, you know, and it's just always some crazy shit that he doesn't understand. Like with all older people that they just don't get, Hey, can you explain the internet to me? Like yeah, yeah, as you're yeah. on your way out the door or something like, right, Oh, right, by right. the way, can you install, you know, this, blah, blah, blah. But um, when ha- when you say it, the the record was thirty seconds. You started out by saying, "Look, yeah, I, uh, like the, my him. my advice was first, just leave." So Harry left, and I think you stayed away from him for how many? How how well, was I started the- doing it? I started treating it like suspend, like drug suspensions, like yeah, when yeah. you get busted or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So it was like thirty days, like the one time I didn't speak to him or go back there for thirty days, and then right. then it was cool, and then he did it again. And then the next time it was two months mm-hmm. that I didn't speak to him or I didn't return any of his texts or calls. And then the next time it was three months. And then finally right. after that, he started to get the idea that, okay, when you act like that, I'm going to disappear. Right. And now uh, did he reach out to you in that month in the 30 yeah. days or oh, during sure, the month? Because he and what always, was your, res- what was your response when he, he did? I forget what it was, but a couple of times I just didn't respond to him. And I got the, I, uh, and then one time he called, just say, are you alive? Question mark. And I wrote, yep. And that's, <laughs> and that's, uh, and I literally told him, I go, if you're going to behave like that, I'm not coming around. So I told you that I'm not coming around. And I literally told him, I'm not going to be there for two months. Now, now you, when did you have that, that com that first conversation? I don't even recall. I mean, two years ago at this point, something like that. It might no, but two- I mean, okay. So like. Did okay, so when you first started setting these boundaries, uh, because my whole thing with that is immediately the beginning of that has to be has to be the response, it has to be action. I think I did say, I think I did say, hey, if you're gonna behave like that, I'm not, I'm not gonna be here, and I left, which I had never done before. But uh-huh. then also, he would apologize because he always, like, more often than not, he would apologize afterwards and say, hey, I'm sorry, blah blah blah. And I said, I think I texted him or called him. I said, I appreciate that you're sorry, but you cannot do that. You cannot behave that way. Just because right. you're having a bad day is no reason to take it out on me when I've been nothing but good to you. And then now, was that conversation after the first 30 days, the 30 days, or was that? Wow. Well, I, I think I don't that remember. was initial. I think that was the initial Initially. conversation. And then when it happened again, then I was just, I just started not 
interacting the way I would. I didn't return his calls when he would the. I didn't return. I didn't reply to his apologies. When you normal, to get your brothers involved on it or some shit. My brothers no, are brothers another are group of assholes recruit, whom yeah, I love, they're, but they're out of their fucking minds too. He's yeah. there. There's a reason he doesn't talk to them because they have the same sort of thing where they'll drive you wild and nuts. And never then, stop. And never stop. They, they got that from my mom. I'm the only one who didn't get it from my mom because I just don't want to. I went the other way with it, which in my life, I was too passive because of both of my parents. So mm. if, if the waiter brought me the wrong food, I never even corrected it. I guess like, well, it's not like a, I guess I'm just a eating phenomenon. But it's like a group. There's going to be one. That's gonna like oh no doubt, but also because just by energy alone, like somebody has to be the, the well. Split. Here's it's even a best way to describe it is when you when you grow up in an abusive environment, even if it's just emotionally abusive, there's always two archetypes. There's the abused and the abusee, right? Now, abusive people don't care which one of those which one of those archetypes they fulfill, which, which role they fill. If you're more, if you're crazier than them, then they will take, they will allow you to be abuse them, which is kind of what, what your father does with your mother, but where he doesn't give it back. He just avoids it and avoids it and takes it. Right. But the, um, but if you're, if you're the softer person, then you become the abuser. The, the abusive person becomes the abuse becomes the person who's most abusive. So they're always subconsciously gauging who's more who's more broken, you know. And then if you if they have, the person you're dealing with is more broken, then you you become the abuser, the abusee, the person who gets abused. If the person is more sane than you, then you become the abuser. It's kind of this kind of this cyclical thing. So the the response now that the response could be you could be well eye for eye i'm gonna do to you what you do to me but then what happens is that that continues the abuse like then i'm abusing you and you're abusing me and then i abuse you more and and it, it never grows so that the, there has to be a different thing so you have to lead off with action and this is the same thing in relationships in the same thing that happens in relationships when you you're in a relationship if somebody is being abusive then you have to take you know i always use the that the 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 metal world when uh metal world the basketball player when uh formerly ron artest ron artest when he yeah. when he he you know and, and don't get me wrong he had he had some bipolar issues and stuff like that but some dude threw a, a full uh beer on him Right. And he went into the stands and choked the motherfucker. Right. And um, and not to say, you know, I mean, he, he also had, you know, he, he actually is a proponent for, for mental illness in a lot of ways. But the first thing they did to that guy who threw the beer, who instigated the fight, because what happened, he went in the, he went in the stands and he thought it was somebody else. And he ended up choking this other person that had nothing to do with it. And uh, and uh, um, but what they what they did was they took the guy's season's pass. They took his season pass. So here's a guy who was a super fan, had, you know, damn near half court, you know, uh, half court tickets. They took his access away and then he had to make uh, a, he had to make a decision whether having having season tickets was more important than his 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 behavior if him acting like a maniac and and spitting out racial terms and whatever whatever he was doing is more important so when you take access away you force the person to make a decision about about what's more important. Do I want do I really enjoy basketball? Do I want to come and and get my half court my season tickets or is it more important for me to be an asshole? And the problem is the the only problem that you come into is what if your relationship with that person? Like the the thing about Harry's dad was Harry Harry's dad loved Harry. And he wanted that he wanted and needed that relationship. He he valued that relationship. And so when he valued that relationship, Harry taking away his season pass to the, the Harry playoffs, he he had he had it took a little time to him for him to figure it out, but then he had to make a decision. He says, dude, look, I don't really get along, I don't get along with my ex, I don't get along with my my son and, and whatnot, right? Um so then the, the question really becomes, okay, 
what's more important. And he decided that his relationship with his son was more important, so he adjusted the behavior. The problem with that is if, if the person doesn't care about the relationship, if they don't care about the relationship, then they just say, well, fuck you. You know what? I'm a, I, I don't, I, you know, I'll go, I'll go get season tickets for the, for the Clippers. You know what I mean? They'll, they'll just yeah. go somewhere else. But here's the- You're the, better the, off, though, if they don't. The problem is that you have these, these family ties where you, you are perceiving your family life or your personal relationship, even in a relationship, a male-female relationship. I mean, Andre went through the same thing with uh, Donifer because he was like, you know, it was just an abusive situation and, and Andre would pull back. And then she was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I want to, you know, I'll, I'll come back, come back. And then she would come back and she just couldn't make that change. And, and then, so you have to assume that if somebody's not willing to make the change, that you're not, you're not important enough. You're not as important as their behavior. Them acting this way is more important. And that's the difficult thing is when you come to the point where you where the person says where where your family member or your girlfriend or your wife is going, yeah, I'm 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 not changing because you're not important enough for me to adjust. Now you're not asking her to change in ways that you, what you're asking is mutual respect. And if she doesn't think that your presence or his or you know in, in Harry's in Harry's case was his father's presence, he thought that Harry's being part of his life was more important than bad behavior. And so he changed the behavior. Yeah. And, and that's the, that what goes on with relationships. And when you have these problems with up front, when you don't set the boundaries up front, you end up in a situation later on where you're unhappy with the way things are going because they think they have a certain level of expectation of what's been happening and you've been tolerating it. Right. So now you have to make those adjustments and it's the same rules of a relationship where you got to go, you know, I, I, um, even small arguments. I remember getting into an argument with my girl uh, early on in the relationship because I didn't know her last name, right? Mm -hmm. This was a fight we got into years That's ago. Funny. What happened, Andre? He's funny to me. I got into this uh, argument because I didn't know. I could just, you didn't know your girl last name. It was here's what it was. It was early on. It was early on in the relationship, but also and he was juggling a couple of them too. That's true. I'm saying, like, that's dumb. Funny. What's my last name? Harry's like ah. Mm. It was more awkward than that. It was uh, it was Christmas time, and we were long distance at the time, so I had to send a gift, and I had to go. Uh, That'd be hey, funny if you give her like a really far name, like Jackson. Hey, baby, um, what's your last name? <laughs> and then it's like silence. I'm like, ah, fuck, man. And so she got really upset. Like, I can't believe. And I had to like explain Did you to hit her. At this point? What happened? Did you hit yet? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but what it was was, you know, with the way things are now, like I she told me her last name like once or twice. And well, that, but and everything was like baby snookums baby, booby booby sweetie. i barely remember her first name i don't even use her first name right so it's one of those things where how often do you call your girl by her first name so the last name and i by the way i knew what it was and i got it right but i i didn't want to do the thing where i took a shot with the name and have her go what That's who the fuck is e ethel yeah <laughs> ah, fuck <laughs> <laughs> and so she was super upset in that moment and she kind of threw a thing and I had to go, look, uh, I don't, you know, I, I didn't want that to happen, but you, you know that I care about you, everything I've done. And she goes, it's just, you know, just blah, don't blah, give blah. a fuck about your name. <laughs> <laughs> but in that moment, I had to stop the conversation because I was taking like a brow beating from her about it. And I just went we're not going to do this. We're, we're, we're not going to do this. Like if this is a, if this is a big thing for you, then let's just not go any further. And then when I was willing to name, uh, we should not even talk. Yo. <laughs> no, it's, but if my ex, if she didn't think my explanation was legitimate, which is, I didn't, you know, in this day and age, especially like 
There was no circumstance until that moment. And for what's me the, to, also what's the what's the response? If you don't remember it, you don't remember it. Right. Now the the, the 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 hurt comes from you. It's your it's your her your e her ego going. How could you be fucking me and not know my and and the reality was because it wasn't that important. I mean, the honest truth of it was that it really wasn't that important to know your first and last name in the moment i guess it was well that- i mean I, I, that's why it was that way because if it was important then you would have made sure you known it but the point was that the the relationship grew and then it sure. did it did yeah come and i mean i understand why she would get upset about it but the point is okay no doubt. are, I, are we going to throw this sh- away right exactly i'm not saying she shouldn't have been hurt by it and that she shouldn't have been upset. But I remember that it was like, it was going on too long. Like I gave my explanation. I apologized for it and said, you know, I, and just did everything. Like, I love you. I care about you. You know, everything I've done, you know, like I, I hope that you know that I love you. And, and then it kept going and going a little bit more. And then I was like, all right, I'm not going to sit here and have you just, and and she's not like that. She's not yeah. like that, but she was just so hurt in that moment. And that's just the instinct is to hammer away. But the thing is, she's not like that because in that moment, I just went, we're not, I was willing to pull the plug on the whole thing because if this is what it's going to be, if we're going to get into these little like, pissy arguments where like your name and your, name, uh, who, your first name your last uh, name it's not about the name. are you a girl or not i mean are you <laughs> but if we're going to continue past the thing of me admitting that i was wrong on this right. level right like me saying i was wrong saying i'm sorry apologizing and then you still want to get your pound of flesh this is not going to be good and we can't keep having this so i was willing to pull the plug on it because this, it might be this, which is important, but the way it's handled, like, we're, I'm not going to keep doing this. Yeah. Like, and if that, there's a sincere, if there's a sincere, right. here's the thing, a sincere apology should be met with, with change, with adjustment. Yeah. And if you're willing to apologize and you're willing to adjust and change and that's not good enough, then that's where we're at. Then, then you're so hurt that you're not willing to move past this. And so now what am I supposed to do? Because I'm flawed, because I'm not perfect, because I, I have flaws and because I, I this is something I did. Now I got to pay for this for the rest of my life. Right. Nobody should do that. And I understand that there's a reasonable way to be upset, but a sincere apology, a sincere, sincere apology should, should, if I mean, look, you can forgive me or not forgive me, but you don't get to not forgive me and then abuse me for the rest right. of my life because right. I did something wrong. That's it. Right. So and that's the weird thing. And it might seem extreme, but guess what? That's the boundary. And it shows like, okay, he's not going to allow that to happen. And the, and the reality is that here's the real reality of that. If you're not willing to be this punching bag, this emotional punching bag, you might as well cut it off now because if that, if her intention is to treat right. you like a punching bag, that's not going to change. That's never going to change. It's going to always be, it's always going to be that, that you're an abuse. She, she's an abusive person. And that, and not to say that, like I said, I don't, I don't want to belittle the fact that, you know, it's a reasonable thing for a girl to want, you want you to know her last name, but if it didn't come up there, I fucked up. I'm sorry. I, did, yeah. I apologize. And, and there's a sincere apology. And so are we going to move? But somebody who can't move on from an apology is, is somebody who can't move on from an apology and if if you're not willing to be this whipping this whipping pole for everything that you do then you need to get out of that relationship because the, what do we say over and over you can't it peep you gotta teach we teach people how to treat us and if right. you're not going to if that's not what you're going to be then you need to set up a situation where you're not that uh let's get out of here um uh, uh harry Kick your social media and all your stuff. Uh, everything there. is at Harry Turjanian. Uh, you could also catch all the uh, Capital Wrestling stuff I do, which is super fun uh, on YouTube um, and Gas Digital. And also definitely check out the Instagram pages and the YouTube page 
of Man School 202. We're putting up original content, some classic stuff, and uh, we're going to be doing some uh, live stuff on there as well, exclusive stuff there. So please follow all of our social media, but definitely the YouTube page and the Instagram. Uh, go ahead, Dre. Just Andre D. Thompson. Put that in your Google search. That's it. All right, same thing with me. Everything Dante Nero, D A N T E N E R O. One on one consultations. Go to Dante Nero.com, click on consult. You can get a one on one with me. And all my social media is on my website. Uh, GYBB gets your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. Yo, I love y'all. Don't forget my PayPal, my WhatsApp, oh, my Cash app. Buy my son some hot shit. Uh, he needs it. He's starving. He's walking yeah. around without pampers. Um, I don't know. He seemed like he had a lot of pampers. Shut Saturday. up. I don't, Shut I don't... up. Yo, I love y'all, man. Um, tell somebody. Let's get out of here. Peace. Man School 202 is created by Dante Nero. Hosted by Dante Nero with Harry Turjanian and Andre D. Thompson. Produced by Harry Turjanian. Executive producers Matt Kleinschmidt, Harry Tarjanian, and Dante Nero.